Hey tubers, welcome back for another adventure. Been having a lot of nice days this winter, so been getting a little more done than usual. What you're looking at is a Kawasaki Lakota engine. 300 cubic inches of joy right here. Okay, for a quick timing check, one just takes this off. And I was probably in here before, but it never hurts to refresh one's memory. Also, um, kind of looking at things with a set of fresh eyes. It's easy to... Oh yeah, it was okay. Was it just okay, or was it really... Was it really good? So, well, time, actually the timing chain looks really pretty nice, but we're, um, we're just going to do is figure out, oh, spark plug. By the way, when I'm at a flea market and I see any tool kits for motorcycles or whatever, I always snap them right up because... A lot of times they you have unique uh, pieces. This actually is a real Kawasaki wrench. Um, and you kind of need it because on some of these, if you go to put like a 14, 17, 18, 19, whatever the spark plug size is, you can't get the socket in here. You need the one that actually comes with it. So, it's going to take me a minute to figure out. I'm not quite sure where the timing is on this. I'm going to have to find out and let you guys know. So, I turned it until I could tell with this wire, the pistons at top dead center. And it turns out, if you look in there, you see that and that line with the T, top dead center. And if you look here, this is uh, KLF 300. And if you look back there, it says top. Well, hopefully you guys could see it. Back behind the back, all the way in the back there. So the timing is good, which is a plus. And the timing chain is nice and tight, right? So we have no worries there. So I'm liking this engine a real lot again. <laughs> I'm going to put it back together again and we'll move to a compression test. I figured I was sitting right at top dead center. And you know what? I'm going to give the valves a quick check. Um, always good to make sure that you have some play here to... Uh, Sure, your compression test is going to be good. Hmm. Seems a little tight. People um, use various techniques to uh, adjust valves on their all-terrain vehicles and motorcycle engines. To me, There's just a, you just barely have enough to make it tap. That's the way I, I, I could feel my fingers that it's a little loose, but there's no tap to it. I'm, I'm probably going to loosen up the intake. Actually, I am going to loosen up the intake a little bit. Easy enough to do. You spin this off. You unwind that just a little bit, you tighten it up while holding the center, and you make sure you get a little bit. Yeah, I'm just going to loosen that up a touch, right? Um, <laughs> no use in uh, in uh, burning a valve or something. This is an older engine. It hasn't been run for a while. I don't mind listening to it tap. It doesn't have to tap quite as much as this guy currently does, but 
I don't care if it taps a little bit, let it tap. Okay, time for a compression test. We have the jump pack here, right? Negative to the body, positive to the starter. Got the official Harbor Freight meter on there. And, oh. It got me, boys. Hang on. I gotta loosen myself here. Note to oneself, try not to get chewed up when you're doing your compression test. Let me stand off to the side here. Yeah, that, uh, that got me pretty good there. That's going to leave a bruise. Somewhere around 130. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, considering this thing has no oil in it, hasn't had oil in it in a long, long time, that's really pretty good. Now, what's left is putting that oil in it, as I mentioned. And I want to take a look at this oil filter situation first. Make sure there is a filter in there. Sometimes when people dump the oil before shipping, they pull that out. Notice that I'm on this foam, and this foam is on wood. Um, one doesn't want to like tear the air oil plug out of the engine. I also have to look at the bottom, make sure it's healthy. So, give me a couple of minutes. I'll turn the camera back on if there's anything interesting. So, we popped the oil filter cover off. And it does, does seem to have some metal particles in there. That's never a good thing. Never a good thing at all. But the oil filter is in there. It does appear to be put in correctly. So I'm going to clean up those particles, throw some oil in it. This is basically going to get a double oil filter. When I go in and change the filter, um, hopefully before I put it on the bike, um, that'll, that'll help get some of this out of here. I mean, it's not... Uh, it's <laughs> I'd rather not be looking at that. Let's put it this way. I don't know. Hopefully we're okay. So I filled it up with oil. And then I turned it over a bit. And the oil level went down a little bit. Which is good. That means it's pumping oil throughout itself. And what we have here is we have the portable jump pack. 12 volts. 12 volt CDI and a spark coil all in one box, including this really cool switch. Anyway, to hook it up, you have this little harness that comes out behind the flywheel, right? And on this harness, the blue is my CDI input, and the black and white goes to the ground. I have the spark plug ground it, spark plug wire going to it. And if you just, I just turned on the jump pack. You see that really cool light right there? I really like that switch, I guess. And I think you guys could see I got plenty of spark. Now it's just a matter of putting the spark plug in and hacking some kind of carburetor onto this thing. Okay, tubers, we managed to hack a carburetor onto here. It's really not on there all that well. The choke is on. We have a throttle cable. We have the portable CDI box. We have a jump pack. So, is it going to start? Let me set up the camera, and we'll find out. Okay, I turned the jump pack on. Choke is on, gas. I think it should just be a matter of turning the key. Um, watch for smoke right here. Let's see what she does.
Yeah, followed by my sobbing sounds. So what we got to do next is drag this one here out of the buckwheat and bring it in and put it on. You guys can see I had the engine, the gas tank and all. I even made the carb adapter. Yeah, it's just, um, this was just a real nasty oil burner. So it's just a matter of uh, swapping that engine on here and uh, make sure the electricals and all are happy. And it'll, uh, this one will be ready to go. I happen to like the Lakota. It's a, it's a bit heavy for a sport machine, but for as a utility machine, the front and back racks, strong as an ox, stable. It's very got a very stable feel to it. I think uh, I think it'll be nice to bring this one back to life. Anyway, that thing should putter out soon. I want to thank everybody for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. Please remember, feet down, heads up, and get out and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.